when I started as an IP attorney, all right, I, again, I knew nothing. Um, but I would take home a treatise like on trademarks and in the evenings I would read it just to be able to learn and understand what I'm expected to know now going forward. And it's looking for finding people who have that commitment, that passion, who are willing to actually dig in and learn the different aspects and the variances that are in the law. Hello, welcome to another lawyer interview. My name is Ashley. I'm the CEO and founder of Green Cardigan Marketing. And what we do here at Green Cardigan is we provide marketing services to law firms who are looking to grow their firm. In today's video, I had an, an awesome opportunity to talk to one of our clients, Terry Sanks uh, from Busey Sanks. Terry is an IP lawyer in the Orlando area. Um, so Terry has grown two law firms. So he's been successful at what he's done. So I talked to him about what have been some of the challenges, um, the most difficult parts. I think as a lawyer, if you're watching this, you're a lawyer, you're not going to be surprised at what Terry talks about is the most difficult part in growing his firm so far. So I hope you en enjoy today's video. I hope you find it helpful along the journey of growing your law firm. All right, Terry, thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to talk to you today. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. So, so tell everyone who's watching who you are, what do you do? Why does it matter? Okay, I'm Terry Sanks, a managing partner of the law firm Busey Sanks. We're an intellectual property law firm. Uh, why does it matter? Uh, there's a lot of reasons why it matters. Uh, one main one, like I said, we work with clients uh, ranging from individuals to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, it matters in part because intangible assets are now the greatest value of the S&P 500. I mean, it used to be brick and mortar. The last study that's been done shows that the intangible assets equates to about 90, 85 to 90% of a company's assets. And that's where intellectual property is, whether it's a patent or more than one patent, actually, trademarks, copyrights, trade secrets, those are their intangible assets. So why did you choose intellectual property? Why did you choose this area of the law? Uh, it kind of chose me. Um, so the first time I really came across intellectual property was while, while I was in the Air Force. I was do, actually um, an officer in the Air Force um, managing a multi-million dollar space experiment. And part of my secondary task or duties was to review what was um, which are classified patents and patent applications and make a determination whether or not they should remain classified. And reading those things put me to sleep. I mean, I hated that task. I hated doing that because, I mean, literally, I knew the technology, but they still, just the way they were written, they would put me to sleep. Um, when I got out of the Air Force, went to law school, um, everyone who looked at my credentials were like, you need to be a patent attorney because, I mean, I had an engineering degree, both bachelor's and master's. Yes, it made sense. But after my experience in the Air Force with patents, I was going every which way but doing patent law. Um, but it's funny how things work out. That was the job that found me. Um, my last year in law school, um, Jim Busey had just moved and went to another firm. Part of his arrangement going to a new firm was he was going to hire in two new associates and train us. And I was one of the two he hired. So when the oppor that opportunity presented itself, I jumped at it. Um, and like I said, I've never regretted it one day. It's, it's, been, it's been a fun ride. Yeah. So to, to fast forward ever since from law school until now, you've been in IP this entire time, right? Correct. So you've grown, you mentioned um, you're with Busey Sinks now and, and the Busey part of the, the name you mentioned, um, but you've grown a successful firm, whether that be alone at times or you've had partners at times. So you've been successful in, in achieving where you're at so far now. Tell me, let me stop there. How many employees do you have or what is your current structure, your site look like? Or your current structure, we have... 
Um, I've kind of been hiring this year, so we're up to 11 employees right now. So there's, um, I've got, counting myself, there's three attorneys. Um, I've got a soon-to-be patent agent who's also working with me. Um, I've got, actually, I anticipate some more growth this year. I've got two other attorneys who may be joining later this year. Wow. So, yeah, if I'm a, an IP attorney and I'm just getting started, I look at you and I'm like, how in the world? You know, how, how do you, as a business owner to business owner, we know that's one obstacle. And then the lawyer, the legal side of things. What would you say, and this is such an impossible question, but what would you say has been the most challenging, maybe surprisingly challenging part in growing your firm? Finding the right people with the right mindset. Um, mm. And when I say the right people with the right mindset, I mean, there's different mindsets out there. Um, when I started, I mean, for example, I'll give you an example. When I started as an IP attorney, all right, I, again, I knew nothing. Um, but I would take home a treatise like on trademarks and in the evenings I would read it just to be able to learn and understand what I'm expected to know now going forward. And it's looking for finding people who have that commitment, that passion, who are willing to actually dig in and learn the different aspects and the variances that are in the law. So it's the people is the most valuable asset, but then the hardest thing to find the people who mesh with your personality. Definitely. I, and I can't even say it's as much mesh with the personality. It's it, They got to understand, I mean, I don't care what the personality is, as long as they're committed to the same direction. And that's not just on the attorney side. I mean, it's also on the staff side. I mean, um, this is the second firm I've started. I mean, at both firms, to me, the backbone of the firm, it's the staff. And if you've got the right staff in place, you can go far. If you don't, you're just going to be muddling along, almost like trying to drive in sand and you're just spinning your wheels. Yeah, man, I, I could not agree more it's from, again, what we do have in common is running a business, right? And yep. in the people part of it is having people who understand your vision, agree with your vision, have the same work ethic as you do. They also have to have the marketing in my experience or the, the legal in your experience or the receptionist or the admin. It's a, it is the most valuable asset to, to having a business. And, and I agree with you. My answer would probably be the same is it's been the surprisingly, the most difficult part for me <laughs> is understanding that. Yep. And then knowing what to look for in those people too. So when you're, let's, if there's a young lawyer who's listening to this and they're growing their staff, what are, what is something you're looking for in the interview process? Whether you're looking to hire an attorney, a front desk, um, admin, what are you, what are some things you're looking for? Personally, I'm looking for someone that I do not have to micromanage. I want. How do you to find that though? How do you know that though? You don't. That's part of the problem. You try to ask the right questions um, during the interview process. You during the initial, say, three three months where you're evaluating them. You're trying to see is it someone who? Okay, look, people are going to make mistakes. That's just part of life. Are they learning from the mistakes or are they making the same mistake over and over? Are they intuitive enough to say, OK, I see how it's been done here. Let me apply the same lesson I learned in this similar situation, right or wrong. I'd rather see someone take the initiative to apply it as opposed to sit there on their hands and say, well, I'm waiting for you to tell me if this is right or wrong. I mean, I don't mind the waiting on sitting on their hands and asking if they're going to ask the question. Um, but they, again, they got to be proactive enough to ask the question. I would, again, having someone who's just not even going to ask the question, that to me is even worse. So you're looking at their work ethic and their drive early on. How quick are you to say, hey, this is not working out. This is working out. Um, I've made the right decision. How quick are you to pull the trigger on that? So now I usually am not that quick 
to fire. Um, from my own experiences, I've learned that it usually takes you about a year to really become competent or comfortable in a job. Um, so I typically try to give people a year to see where they go with the job. But during that year, it's not, I may start at one level, bringing them along, but I'm increasing the responsibilities, the expectations during that year. Um, and now there's been some situations during that year that no, I have had to um, let people go during that time. Um, but at the same time, I've had people realize this isn't for me and they've left on their own accord. How have you identified where to put resources? Like you said, you've grown two firms now, so you're doing something right. How do you identify when you're growing where to put resources, be it money, time, marketing, investment? How do you how do you do that? That's a good question. <laughs> I try to have a a roadmap up front um, uh, in, in advance on where I'm trying to go with the firm. And based on the roadmap, that's where I'm trying to allocate funds. Um, like right now, um, one of the allocations is towards marketing. I'm trying to inc inc increase the, the, the client base that we have here. Um, and, but at the same time, as I'm doing that, I am watching and looking at making sure we have the right manpower and other resources to be able to meet the needs of, of the new clients that come on board. So it's a balancing act, but you're always looking at that future goal that you have predetermined. Yes. This is the goal of the firm, whatever decision I have to make right now, but it's to get to that ultimate goal that you have very clearly defined. Exactly. What has worked in, in growing the two firms, marketing, uh, networking, um, it could be a multitude of things. What has worked? Networking. Um, marketing is something new I'm doing. Um, I mean, we've I, I, even at my old firm, I mean, I've had this firm now just over three years. At my old firm, everything was just word of mouth. It was more networking. Even now, I'm still doing a lot more networking, but I am also putting funds in, into to marketing. Um, and I am, I'm doing that in part because right now the networking, that's all on me. And I wanted to get it to a point where the marketing, the clients coming in, aren't just completely reliant on me being the face, me being involved with, with completing, doing the marketing as well as the sales. What is, let's now cut to the that ultimate goal you're talking about for the firm, what is it? What is your ultimate goal? What are your three, five, 10 year goals for your firm? That's a good question. <laughs> um, three, five, 10 years. Actually, it's all really about scaling. So, I mean, my the way this firm is set up, again, we're an intellectual property boutique law firm. I don't see us moving away from that. I want to s stay a boutique firm specializing focused on intellectual property. Um, I advertise and market ourselves and, and because we are, we are a full service intellectual property law firm. So that means we do trans, what I call the transactional side, which is preparing and filing patent applications, trademark applications, um, copyright applications, uh, handling transactional work such as license agreements, any other types of agreements that involve IP. And then on the litigation side, whether it's federal court litigation, if it's state court, or when I say litigation, IP litigation, um, same thing with any type of state court. We have arbitration type, what I call quasi litigation, like before the trademark trial and appeal board, patent trial and appeal board. And even now there's something new called the copyright claims board. Um, so it's not as much, and when I say scale, those I still see being the core of the firm, but it's now just getting more in those areas and scaling up in those areas. So for example, right now, besides myself, I've got one patent attorney and I've got a technical writer who's training to become a patent agent. Um, I'd like to scale that area up more where we have more patent attorneys involved. 
Right now, the only one handling the trademarks is me. I'd like to get at least someone on board who can also now handle preparing, filing, dealing with the trademark office on office actions and, and things like that. Um, similarly on the litigation side, right now, besides myself, I have one litigation attorney. As things grow, I'd like to be adding and scaling up and adding more uh, litigation attorneys. So what that final number is in three years from now, I don't have a number. Um, I mentioned earlier, I have two potential other attorneys who may be coming on board later this year. Um, they will probably touch across all the areas, um, at least initially. Uh, and they both are coming on with some levels of experience. Um, and again, we'll see how it grows from there. What are you most looking forward to in the future? Most looking forward to? Um, that's another good question. Um, I, honestly, I look at it just seeing how we grow and seeing how the firm matures, how it how it develops. I mean, I talked again about the growth areas, like even on the patent side. I mean, right now we do handle some, uh, we handle primarily engineering type patents, but we do have some that are in the chemistry arena and I'm looking at gaining also into the biotech arena. So when I say full service, I truly want to be a full, full service firm. Um, what I'm looking forward to, again, watching and seeing how all this comes together. See if you can do it. Yes. So far, you're doing it. So far. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations to you, Terry. You've really, you, I mean, we work with you on the, on the marketing and um, you have, you've grown a great firm. You've got a great staff who, you, they seem to have a plan and a, a future and that's important, right? Mm -hmm. So thank you for your time today. For, for those looking to, to get a hold of you or find you, uh, tell folks where they can find you at. Um, well, online, our domain name is firstniplaw.com. And those are all the words. I and mean, there's no numbers in there. Um, we're also on Facebook. I mean, if you just Google Busey Sanks or Google Terry Sanks, you, you will find us. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you again, Terry. And if you're watching this, if you're a law firm owner and you're looking to grow your firm, we would love to help you. This is what we do at Green Cardio Marketing. But thank you for watching the video. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.